From Maglio Ordonez keeping the bat high in the air to Kevin Euclid's crazy stance that's almost impossible to describe, here are some of the most unique batting stances in baseball. And we're kicking this off with Ordonez's stance. You know how parents tell us to reach for the stars when we're kids? Well, I think Maglio's parents kept telling him that. Because this dude holds the bat up so high that it looks as if he's literally reaching for the stars. But hey, doing that has allowed the dude to achieve quite a lot of success. As he retired with an impressive batting average of 0.31 and nearly 300 home runs. So I guess holding the bat high like that is the way to go. And Craig Council is further proof of that. If you thought Maglio kept his bat high in the air, then you've got to see how Council held his bat during his stints with the D-backs and Brewers. Craig held that thing up so high that it wouldn't be weird to wonder if his bat was going to put a dent in the domes of either Chase Field or Miller Park. Craig would also do an arm flap, so when he was a rookie, Marlins coach Rich Donnelly called him the Chicken Man. Though, at least he managed to rack up over 40 homers and 390 RBIs with that stance. While speaking to ESPN, Council admitted that it looked ridiculous. But according to him, he just tried it one day. And it felt comfortable, so he stuck with it. But players such as Ian Kinsler rely on other methods to get the job done. When Kinsler's batting, he drops his bat in the back of his stance before treating fans to some compulsive twitching as he rises up to hit the pitch that's being delivered. That begs the question though, why does the dude twitch so much when he's batting? Maybe it's to calm his nerves, because it's definitely one of the more funky stances I've seen. That said, it's worked well for him throughout his career, as he has well over 250 home runs. Speaking of unique stances that work well for players, let's talk about Tony Batista's batting stance. When it comes to players who prefer more open stances, Batista's at the top of the list. I mean, the dude's stance was more open than a 24-hour supermarket. Batista would face the pitcher and his legs would be perpendicular to the pitch's path. As for his feet, they'd be placed on the opposite edge of the batter's box. It was the type of stance that had you wondering whether Batista was ready to bat his heart out or make his way back to the dugout. But his 221 home runs, 718 RBIs, and two all-star selections are proof of the fact that his stance got the job done. Now even though Batista's stance was super wide, Jeff Bagwell's was even wider. Sure, from the waist up, Bagwell's stance is pretty traditional, but once you look at it from the waist down, it gets quite strange. It honestly seemed as if he was trying to play Twister. So if you want to copy his stance, all you've got to do is start with your right foot on the red dot and keep it there, before taking your left foot and planting it on the farthest yellow dot you can manage. If you don't want to do that, just try to do the splits with a baseball bat in hand and there you have it. After all, a big league batter's box is six feet long, and Bagwell nearly spanned that distance with his stance. Standing like that in itself is crazy, but then hitting a ball that's coming right at you on top of that is just unbelievable. Though, of course, just because his stance was weird doesn't mean it didn't allow him to be super successful. I mean, Bagpipes ended his career with 449 home runs, 1,529 RBIs, three Silver Slugger awards, an MVP award, and four All-Star selections. Wide stances such as Batista and Bagwell's are pretty rare, but Phil Plantier was out there squatting in the batter's box. Phil truly was the Sultan of Squat, and even though his crouching stance didn't last forever, he's best known for it. He'd be doing deep knee bends while he was out to bat, and dare I say it, Plantier almost planted himself in the ground with that crouching stance of his. But he wasn't the first man to squat in the batter's box. In fact, baseball's all-time stolen base king did it before Plantier. Yup, I'm talking about Ricky Henderson. Henderson was only 5'10", and he managed to shrink his strike zone even more by crouching as low as he could. He would bend his knees at an extreme angle and lean his torso forward before swinging the bat. And unlike Plantier, Henderson had a Hall of Fame career, holding the record for the most runs scored in league history at 2,229, and he even recorded almost 300 home runs. The dude was a bona fide stud, as he was a 10-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger, and two-time World Series champ. But even Ricky wasn't the first man to opt for such a low stance, as it was Oscar Gamble who did it before them. Oscar would crouch so far down with his head over the plate that it seemed as if he was going to tip right over. Just like with Ricky, the stance allowed Gamble to achieve great success as it helped give him a better vantage point for incoming pitches and made him a better hitter. His 200 homers and 666 RBIs are proof of that. Plantier, Oscar, and Henderson definitely turned a lot of heads with their crouching stances, 
but they're not as unique as Mickey Tettleton's. What I love about Mickey's stance is that it almost seemed as if the dude would get lost in thought before realizing that he's up to bat just as the pitcher's throwing the ball. He would stand upright with the bat resting horizontally and loose in his hands, so it looked as if he was unsure what to even do next. From the pitcher's viewpoint, it was impossible to even see the bat except for its head poking out slightly behind his back. Though, of course, I can't talk down on his stance too much because Tettleton was a two-time All-Star and three-time AL Silver Slugger, and he had well over 200 home runs along with 722 RBIs. But while Mickey's stance was unique because of how he held his bat, Aaron Rowan's was a rare one because of the positioning of his body. The easiest way to explain his stance is by comparing it to someone who's sitting on an invisible stool, but with their back completely straight and their feet pointed out. If you want a more detailed description, then let me tell you about how Robert Rubino of the Press Democrat described Rowan's stance. First, Aaron stands bow-legged in the batter's box before bending his knees and gyrating his hips. Then, he holds the bat outward at groin level, parallel to the ground, before wagging the bat slowly, while continuing to stand bow-legged. According to Robert, this goes on for a beat too long to avoid an NC-17 rating if it were a movie. As weird as his stance was, at least he hit 136 home runs, had a solid batting average, and became a two-time World Series champ. Rowan's stance was so unique because of his body movement, but much like Tettleton, Gary Sheffield made the cut because of how he held his bat. We all know and love Sheffield for his signature bat wagging before he hits pitches, so it's only right for him to be here. Gary would stand just like any other batter, but he'd keep his bat high in the air and wag it until the pitch was thrown. All that movement seems like it could mess up your timing, but that clearly didn't happen with Sheffield. It was a stance that required an immense amount of wrist strength, though much like almost everyone else I've talked about. His unique stance earned him a lot of homers, 509 to be exact. Not to mention he won five Silver Slugger awards and was a nine-time All-Star, so the bat wagging worked wonders for him. And for Julio Franco, it was standing like a knock-kneed pelican that helped him be a beast, or at least that's how Michael J. Mooney would describe his stance from a distance. Franco's longevity was unmatched, and his batting stance was one to remember. He would stand with his toes and knees pointed together and his backside stuck out, while he held his back elbow above his ear and twisted his fingers together near the bat's knob. Franco would then point the bat head right at the pitcher before swinging. That said, the most unique stance of them all is that of Kevin Euclid. If you take Julio's elbow over the ear, bat head towards the pitcher stance, add Council's upright body positioning, Batista's locked knees, and finally, a top hand that slides inches away from the bottom hand on the bat handle, then you've got Kevin's stance. When Kevin was asked about his crazy stance, he said that, it just happened, there's no explanation. Euclid ended his career with an impressive batting average, 150 home runs, and 618 RBIs. So the three-time All-Star and two-time World Series champ clearly knew what he was doing with that wacky stance. There you have it from Kevin Euclid's crazy stance that's almost impossible to describe to Meglio Ordonez keeping the bat high in the air, those were some of the most unique batting stances in baseball.